Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group and our toll-free number 800 592 The website at allamericangold.com. And welcome on this Tuesday. I, I, I tell you what, I am feeling much better today. I was... Uh, sick all weekend, but uh, feeling a lot better today. Uh, yesterday, normally we have uh, my son Joey on every Monday. Uh, he had appointments. He has just been swamped as people are starting to figure out, hey, maybe I need some help in making sure my assets are, are protected. Joey, I think we've got you today. You there? Yep, I'm there. How you doing? Did you make it home okay? How's the weather? Yeah, we made it home in one piece. So uh, let, let, let's let's just get right into it. Joey works at Northwestern Mutual. Uh, you've been dealing with uh, a lot of our listeners, people all over the place. And, and I, I, two of the biggest things you've been telling me are people that are – or, you know, at that retirement level, they've done the right thing uh, from day one. They're in a good spot, and yet they've been way too aggressive and in, in taking huge losses. And then on the other side of it, uh, the younger people uh, not doing enough when they were younger, and now as they get closer to retirement, they're in that tough spot because they're not prepared. Yep, and that's essentially what I've been seeing in a common theme is, hey, you know, I had a, a couple come in recently. They're in their mid-60s, and they were actually way too aggressive. They were in 90% equities, and they had no one run a retirement analysis for them. They thought they were behind. We ran the analysis, and it turns out that they had more than enough money to retire and actually were risking losing more of their portfolio um, in retirement, which was terrible. You know, the, the guy they were working with was just concerned with getting assets under management and telling them, oh, we're going to get these awesome, great returns, and it turns out their portfolio is down 23%, losing around $400,000. And it just shows that, hey, we are not here to just bring assets under management. We're here to give you a retirement analysis and then give you recommendations based off of that and for them, we've saved them hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then we also are helping them play the tax game, saving another thousands of dollars in retirement. And it just goes to show that if you just take the action, you make that phone call and meet with my team and I, we can certainly be a resource for you, whether it be investments, tax planning, estate planning, or the insurance planning side of things. And then for younger people, you know, they think that maybe just putting money into a 401k is going to be enough or relying on Social Security will be enough, and it turns out that it's, it really isn't. And the reason being is the market is crazy, the cost of living is continuing to go up, and Social Security is in the question mark. Um, as we get older and older, it's going to decrease. Uh, the government just can't afford to be paying out this much money as, as they've been just printing it like nothing. And what we do for younger people is help them establish tax-efficient vehicles, help them put together a game plan, show them an analysis that we're changing every six months, you know, because life is crazy, things change, goals change. So so should your financial plan. And we're able to adapt and overcome and change things and put things into place for your best-case scenario. Um, and I think the, the value we bring is tremendous. You know, we don't charge for our time. We generally just want to see if we can bring value. And everyone we've been able to help out so far is in a way better position than they were before chatting with us. Joey, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, just reach me at my personal cell phone, 602-909-9048. Again, that's 602-909-9048. Uh, so leave me a phone call or a text or a voicemail if I don't respond. I'll get back to you as soon as possible, and uh, we'll go from there. What are some of the things, when, when somebody reaches out to you, what are some of the first things uh, that you're going to ask them for? What, what are you guys going to, what do you want to see? What are you guys going to talk about? 
So uh, their first phone call is simply us setting up a meeting, me introducing myself and learning a little about you, like, hey, are you married? What are you doing for a living? And things like that. And then from there on, you know, we just have a conversation. You really don't have to have too much with you. Maybe just a basic understanding of overall what's going on financially. And then, you know, when it comes to it, you enjoy the conversation, which most people do. The second meeting, before the second meeting, we'll ask for your 401k statements, a budget sheet, a balance sheet, cash flows, just to get an understanding of exactly what's going on, what's coming in, and what's coming out. And that really allows us to build a concrete analysis and really show you how we're tracking. You know, without that information of your 401k statements or your Roth IRAs or, or your, your real estate, we really can't show you something that's buttoned up and precise. But with all that information, we can show you a crazy analysis that shows you exactly how we're tracking. And then if we're not tracking for retirement and there's a shortage, we'll show you ways to get there, how much we need to save per month to get there. And most people are saving money. They're just not putting it away into efficient vehicles. Maybe they're just putting too much in the bank. Or maybe they're putting too much of their money in, into a traditional account that doesn't have any tax advantages. And so we really look at that from a perspective of, one, how do we spend down that money in retirement? And if you're pre-retirement, how do we grow this money safely without exposing ourselves to too much risk before we enter retirement and so we can hit that goal of, hey, I want to retire on 5000 a month or 10000 a month. We'll be back with more with Joey. Don't touch that dial. Picture Radio News Hour. We're back, Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour. We got my son Joey with us uh, for a few more minutes here today. Normally joins us on Monday, uh, but he was book solid uh, as people are starting to realize uh, this is a much different environment and really going back to probably 2011. Uh, really, when, when Wall Street bottomed in, in 2011, uh, the last 10 years has been 10 years of, of endless money printing, uh, these low interest rates, and now all of a sudden uh, the money printing has stopped. Interest rates are, are, are really starting to climb, and the Fed's saying, hey, there's a lot more still to come. And for the first time, a lot of people – well, I shouldn't say for the first time, but the first time in, in 10 years – People are taking losses, Joey, and they're taking big losses. Yeah, people are taking insurmountable losses, and they're losing 20% of their portfolios seemingly overnight, you know, in a couple of months. And, you know, people will tell you, hey, let's not check our 401K, let's not check it. Um, but the thing is, if you're in your 50s, you're in your 60s, or you're in your 40s, and you're down 25%, 20%, I think there might be a problem with how you're allocated. Now, if your advisor hasn't talked to you in other ways to hedge your investments, you don't have anything set up to hedge those, then it's certainly a problem. You know, for us, we like to set up different buckets of money that will hedge against the market in times like this so that all of our clients are actually able to pull from a different bucket of money, allowing their investments to recover, which is great, and it makes us recession-proof. You know, as we all know, there's going to be down periods in the market. Every 15 years, we always see something like this, where the market just goes down and a ton and, and stuff is crazy and there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Well, how do we make it so that we don't care if there's a recession, right? We, we can ride some waves knowing that we have different buckets of money set up. But for, for people out there who are looking at their 401k accounts and they don't like what they see and they want a second opinion or maybe they want to see, hey, how am I tracking for retirement? We are more than happy to do so over here. We're not going to charge you anything. It's a free second opinion. However, what I would say is that now is the time to start taking some action with things. You know, we're entering the new year. Let's get a game plan set up for 2023. Let's figure out the tax route, and let's make sure we're giving Uncle Sam the smallest slice of the pie possible. And we go into the new year knowing, hey, we got a solid plan put in place. We know where we're at and let's continue to improve on our current situation. You know, we're going to reach out to you and meet with you at least twice a year. Some clients want to meet every quarter. Some want to meet even more than that, and I'm more than happy to do so. We'll clarify, hey, what, what do we want to do in this relationship? Do you want me to reach out every quarter? If so, I will. And we'll set those meetings and have quarterly reviews and tell you how our investments are going and continue to update things. 
Um, but really, for the people that are down 25%, 20%, you know, I urge you to make a phone call. Let's just have a conversation about things, show you a plan, and then take some action on this before the new year starts, simply because it's very important that we enter January knowing, hey, this is where I'm at, this is where I want to be, and this is how I'm tracking. And overall, just give you some clarity on everything going on in your situation so you don't have to stay up at night wondering, oh, am I going to be able to retire or is my 401k account going to survive this big hit? Joey, give everyone your contact information. I know you're a busy guy and you've got a, a meetings to come up with. Uh, one last time, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, just reach me at my personal cell, 602-909-9048. Again, that's 602-909-9048. And I'll get back to you within the same day, within 24 hours. If I miss your phone call, just leave me a text or voicemail. Um, but thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. And hope everyone enjoys the rest of the week. There you have it. That's Joey Northwestern Mutual, 602-909-9048. Uh, make that call. Save yourself a ton of money. Why, why lose 20% when you don't have to? Uh, Jason, uh, we, we got to talk about the markets today. Gold and silver uh, rallied back today. The Dow was down heavy yesterday. Uh, down again today, consumer confidence was out, and the consumer sh showing signs uh, of being tapped out, saying that, uh, I don't know what the Fed's talking about, inflation hasn't cooled at all. That's correct, Joe. I, I uh, witnessed that around, just around here in uh, Johnstown. You know, it's, it just seems like uh, the money that was coming in, whether it just be for gold and silver or just our advertisers and, and things like that. Joe and I talk about this uh, a lot over, over the last year. Uh, it's just not as much money floating around. It seems like, uh, as Joe has said uh, several times the last few weeks, there, there's a little bit of it still there. It's, it's like that we're limping through the Christmas holiday with some spending, but I just don't see any money next year, Joe. And it's, uh, it's, it's a very grim feel everywhere you go. And, and this is something, you know, because I think uh, we're, we're pretty relatable. We have a very diverse customer base. Uh, we have uh, a lot of high net worth customers. Uh, we, and we've got uh, people that, hey, it's they work hard to put some gold and silver away. Uh, and, we, and we have seen, uh, especially, and Jason, I know you can attest to this, in the last three to four weeks, the amount of selling, and, and I'm talking about selling of less than $5,000, right? This isn't, uh, hey, I'm selling because I'm making a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making a big purchase, right? I, I'm going to I'm gonna buy uh, a, a piece of land or I'm going to buy uh, a piece of property or, or whatever it may be. Jason, we're, we're seeing this, hey, I, I, I'm just short. I, I, I need some money and uh, this is... This is kind of my last option. My credit cards are getting maxed out. I, I, I need to sell some gold and silver just to buy some time. Yeah, that's right. I, I mentioned yesterday, uh, I was at a store over the weekend, and, and the lady says, yeah, no cash coming in here anymore. It's, it's all straight credit cards, not even debit cards, all straight credit cards coming in the entire purchasing uh, weekend for uh, the, the Thanksgiving, Black Friday sort, sort of situation. So. Uh, that's not a good deal. What is the highest uh, uh, credit card debt in history, right? Yeah, the highest in history. And, and then there's some other things to look at. But, uh, out of California, they California said July broke a record for the number of Californians participating in, in the SNAP program. That's the food stamp program. They said that 4.9 million people in California were on the SNAP program. That is the highest record ever. The previous high was during COVID, uh, 4.8 million in June of 2020. Uh, but the, no, the, the, if outside of COVID, the last time food participation, food stamp participation was this high, the unemployment rate in California was 16%. Jason, the unemployment rate today is 3.8%. That is the official unemployment rate in California. By the way, that's the lowest since 1976. 
and yet they've got the highest amount of people on food stamps. Lower standard of living that causes that, Joe. And I, and I don't know, obviously they've been fudging those unemployment numbers for, for so many years that in this particular situation, their, their rigged uh, unemployment numbers don't, don't help them when it comes to uh, easing off of uh, the interest rate hikes and, and, and uh, not doing quantitative easing. But, but, but Joe, yeah, it's uh, working and, and getting less out of it is obviously what that number shows you. You know, hey, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm working the same hours. And I need food stamps now. Well, Joe, that's lower standard of living. It's a, a huge indicator. Yeah, and then New York, the state of New York has issued a, a warning to its customers saying that uh, power blackouts are possible. Uh, grid, or, uh, grid operators warning customers a sharp rise in wholesale electricity prices this winter due to several what they're calling economic and geopolitical factors that continue to impact the cost of natural gas used in energy production. And here's the sad part about this. The customer doesn't know when that's happening. Right? All of a sudden, uh, you know, everything's fine. And, and they're, they're running, they're, they're, they got the heat going, uh, the, the, the snowstorm's coming, or, or the big blast of cold air's coming. And then all of a sudden, without any warning, the power grid operator's like, uh-oh, we don't have enough power. We've got to go get power on the open market. And at that point, Jason, they can pay two, three, four, five, ten times the amount for power, and then that poor per that person running their heat has no idea. Oh, by the way, for the last four hours, uh, your energy bill just quadrupled uh, without you even knowing. That's not a good situation, Joe, for sure. I mean, I was uh, there are so many things that people have no idea can go wrong very badly, and I I forget which state it was. I uh, had a power outage yesterday. Uh, and, and then Texas, uh, and then is that where the water went bad immediately after Texas? Yeah, Houston still, by the way, still down. You can't drink the water because the power went out and they, uh, the water sanitation plant couldn't do its job. And it was like, well, you got to uh, either a boil order or just drink bottled water. You know, it's incredible it's, it's how fast things can go wrong, Joe. Yeah. And, and the funny part is they have backup generators, but they said whatever the problem was, they couldn't even get the generators to fire up. I don't even know how that works. Again, you know, uh, obviously, whoever was doing the planning uh, for the city of Houston uh, wasn't a prepper because no, no good prepper would have let that be the situation. That's right. So, so uh, yesterday on Faking, Faking the Truth, I had Glenn Biddle on. Uh, he was on. He, he came on for a little bit on uh, Half Empty Cup of Joe with us yesterday. But uh, he was he bring some stuff on about you know digital currencies and things, Joe, and uh, and I'll I'll present this to you because you know it's just kind of a eureka moment. I mean, uh, what about this, Joe? I, I why do I get the feeling that maybe all of this energy suppression we're seeing in the news maybe it's just completely a lie? Okay, and and I and the reason I say that, Joe, is uh, anybody has learned a little bit about Bitcoin, okay. It uses a tremendous amount of electricity, and Bitcoin is what it's. Just, it's a small little market still, Joe. Even though it's it's just growing, it's a small little market. Well, now you have to have a worldwide digital currency, right? And you got a growing population, and you have five G towers everywhere. Yeah, yeah, this is a tremendous amount of power. Why do you get? You know, I, I've heard some oil workers come in here and say, "Hey, we're not shutting down. We're as busy as we've ever been." I'm starting to think, Joe, that there's just not enough power for this new system they're putting into place i think i don't think we've actually shut down a lot of oil i don't think you, you talked about the oil exports going out of the country well if china's going to a digital currency they need something to power that te technology up joe i get the feeling nobody i think we don't have enough energy for what they're trying to put into place and so they're going to hide they're going to hide the shortages as, as 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 incompetent presidents shutting it down that's a that could very well be i mean our oil production uh, has essentially been, uh, you know, right around that 11 million barrel a day number, uh, you know, pretty much for the last couple of years. Uh, so we're not we're not 
producing less oil. We're not producing less natural gas. It's not like we're having some crazy weather, right? I mean, you know, it, it's cold, it's hot, it's this, it's that, but it's not been crazy. Uh, why is it seemingly every state almost is saying, hey, by the way, we may have blackouts this year? I mean, it, it really does defy logic. And blame electric vehicles for it. <laughs> right? And, right. Right. And then we want you all to plug your cars in. I, right. Yeah, I, I, again. Starting to think, Joe. I'm starting to think that that's where we're headed. We're, we're headed for energy shortages because the, the uh, slave system, which is going to get much worse with digital currencies and 5G towers to, to track everything, everything we do, they just can't produce enough juice to get it running. So when things crack a little bit, well, it's, it's Putin. That's Germany. It's 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 it's, uh, it's Europe. There, it's their green policies. It's it's electric vehicles. No, it's 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 uh, digital currencies and the amount of energy cost it takes just to build a few Bitcoin, right? Uh, and then of course they turn that on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, just to make sure no one knew what they were doing. We'll talk about that next. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Tuesday, and and Jason, uh, the Federal Reserve. It really, really is getting awkward out there. As the 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 Fed made a bunch of dovish statements before Thanksgiving, we had this big market rally. And now all these same governors are coming out and saying the exact opposite thing that they said, and and now Wall Street's getting hammered again. Right, Joe, and it's uh, it's interesting when uh, when certain things start to happen. And and we reported yesterday uh, the protests going on in China. There was protests going on last week into this week in Europe, and when people start, especially peacefully, start to protest in large amounts. Uh, it makes the, the people that run things very nervous about their situation and uh, how, how uh, precariously uh, tilted uh, it could go the wrong direction for them. So I, I think I think we're going to start seeing some major changes going on. Cause you, you, people in the streets, Joe, that's when people start getting assassinated. You know, you, people were in the streets in the 60s, weren't they? John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King. You know, I, I, I hate to say it, but it's, it seems like that the people are getting sick and tired of what's going on, and the inflation is really sharp, and I think it's a much more severe than they're telling us. Well, you know what? It's interesting that they launched uh, that test of the digital currency on Wednesday, uh, you know, the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, this test is, is to last uh, about 12 weeks, uh, and now there's just – reports just popping up here and popping up there saying hey you know what this thing may go live in 2023 which tells me that we we've got this problem and it's the same thing jason i think we've been saying for a long time the fed can't raise rates high enough to crush inflation without absolutely destroying the economy because let's just be honest Okay, if inflation's at 8%, now that's what they say it is, right? 7.8%. Well, everybody knows how high do you have to have rates to stop inflation. And the answer is always the same. It has to be at and actually a little bit higher than the actual rate of inflation. Now we know that if we are tracking the inflation the way they were in the 70s and the, in the early 80s, that number would be even higher, right? We, we know this. So the fact of the matter is they're sitting there saying, hey, we're going to go to 5%, 6%. I think uh, Bullard was out saying, hey, it's somewhere between 5 and 7%. Jason, they know that that's not enough. I think they know that. And I think what they're going to end up doing is saying, hey, you know what, this is as high as we can go. Now we need to go to the digital money in order to do it because, uh, you know what, they'll come up with some really smart reason as to why it is. But we're going to need this digital currency. Otherwise, we're just going to be in stagflation. Yeah, Joe, you know, it's interesting if you're a central bank in charge of interest rates. Uh, 
a lot of times you'll shoot for inflation because obviously a little bit of inflation, that's good for you and your, your private uh, corrupt buddies to, to take advantage. But sometimes your measures don't get enough inflation and sometimes your measures push inflation too hard. I wonder, Joe, if, if – where we're at. Remember uh, earlier this year, I, I keep talking about that New York Fed chief saying, hey, uh, we're going to be at 6.8 in June of 2023. I mean, just very certain of where uh, the CPI, that the CPI is going to be at that level next year in June. And I, you have to ask, well, why does he want it? It's, why why 6.8? Why, why can't they make that lower? Why, why can't they do something about that? And Joe, I just, I just wonder, I wonder, uh, you know, they, they have a new system they want to put into place, right? Why not have this this dangerously high but not extremely high inflation? You know, let's just say six percent, seven percent CPI number, all the way through next year. And then, if you need a, if you need an emergency, you need a tipping point. All you have to do is you know because they're going to they're going to taper. They're going to it's going to be a half a point uh, rate hike in December. It's going to be that much or less in, in February. And I think they go down to just not raising it, but leaving the interest rate at like let's say the the core at five percent. Think about it. in that situation, you could start printing a bunch of money and, and go make inflation go berserk, you know, or you could just drop the race to zero and, 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 and uh, try to have a party. But either way, whatever situation you want, whatever you're planning, you'll be much more positioned well to cause the economy to, to follow suit. It's going to be very interesting because I think what what's happening is we're being set up here for some shift. Uh, and, and I think the shift is going to be, hey, you know, uh, we don't have enough tools in the tool. Because they like to talk about all the tools they got, right? Oh, we got this tool. All the tools are the same, right? They're, they're debt tools, right? We can make the cost of debt cost less or we can make it cost more. We, we, we can start creating money out of thin air and buy debt or we can, you know, say, hey, we're selling debt. But either way, it's all debt. And, and. The, the fact that they're rushing this digital currency, which, let's face it, they didn't even admit they were really doing anything until COVID started. I mean, they, they I, I think the most we got out of Janet Yellen is, oh, well, we had a couple meetings. Uh, someone wrote a white paper. Uh, Jay Powell was denying that cash was going to go away. Uh, Jay said, no one's doing that now. Matter of fact, Janet Yellen already said, oh, it's it, we have to have it. There's no other way. Have to have it, Joe. Well, because that's what makes it work for them. You know, that's, once again, I, uh, Glenn Biddle played this piece with the Prime Minister of uh, England. You know, that, that that Muslim guy, the new guy, and he was he was talking about how great how great this digital currency is going to be. And he's talking about you know the central bank is, is going to be. It's going to come directly from them, and this is so great. And it's just these rosy comments about central banks. Well, because he's working for them, and what works for them works for him, and and so that's the whole thing. They have to have it, Joe, because I'm sure it will work for them. I'm going to tell you right now. You have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in your bank account. You are making a huge mistake. This is coming even, and it always works this way. I always think I'm on it, and I, I've got a good feel for it. And I'm like, okay, we're not going to make it out of this decade. Before 2030, this digital currency is going to be here. And then I was like, okay, well, maybe, you know, 2025, 2026, something like that. And now, all of a sudden, Jason, seemingly out of nowhere, people are saying, hey, get ready for this next year. Next year, yep, that's what we. Next we've, year, that's what uh, Glenn Biddle. We were playing clips about this next year. That's exactly what you know. He had three clip, two clips, that was talking very strongly about this, and and they're already testing it. Here's the thing: they're testing it out. So it's, you know, and I think they've test. I think what went on with FTX was a test, also, Joe. I really believe that was a test, also. It's interesting how the timing of all of this has worked out. Uh, yeah, another one filed bankruptcy yesterday as well. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800 uh, I got a really great, cool special today. Uh, man, it pays to wait. I've been waiting. Uh, finally got one worth looking at here. I've got $100. $20 St. Gaudens. 
So the St. Gaudens, that came in after the Liberty Series. You know, Jason, we've talked, told the story a million times, right? Teddy Roosevelt didn't think the Liberty was majestic enough because the United States was now a power. Uh, and they commissioned this guy, Augustus St. Gaudens, to design uh, the new coin, which is the same design that's on the Silver Eagle of, of today, uh, the St. Gaudens up till gold confiscation in 1933. But these are going to be C-U-B-U. C-U, choice uncirculated. B-U, brilliant uncirculated. Jason, this is the, the highest grade uh, before you send them off to get graded by the grading services. And my guess is a lot of these coins probably could be graded, right? Mint State 60, 61, maybe some 62s. Uh, but like everything, grading, grading coins has gotten really expensive. You used to be able to grade a coin for 5 or $10. Can't do with that anymore. Uh, so here's the great part. The same exact price is our circulated $20 Saints today. $2,095 but you're going to get the highest quality before grading. And I've got 100 of these, Jason. Uh, BUCU Saints at $2,095. Really cool. Yeah, we get these once in a while, Joe. And then they're, uh, when they get shipped to me before I call the customers in, they, you know, it's, it's nice. It's kind of cool to have a higher quality coin uh, being passed to the customers. Buy it if it's cheap, no matter when you can get it, obviously. But, uh, you know, this is... This is cool. This is the one that uh, uh, if you've got several of these, or you got uh, if you're fortunate to, to build up a tube of these, you, you put the, uh, the the really nice uncirculated ones at the bottom. So you know if you ever have to sell them, you make sure that these get sold less. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put the pretty ones on the top when you're selling them, man. But these are going to be uh, really nice looking coins. And let me yep. give you an idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, St. Louis Fed, James Bullard, out again today in an interview with Market Watch. Wanting Wall Street and you to know, rates are not coming down. Rates will have to be north of 5% into 2024 if they have any chance in taming inflation. Uh, Bullard, of course, who we talked about last week, said it could be as high as 7% uh, reiterated in his interview with Market Watch that, the, the, that Wall Street is misinterpreting the Fed's comments and that the interest rates will have to remain higher for much longer and do not expect the Federal Reserve to offer a quick turnaround where, hey, we, we're going to stop raising rates, and then, you know, the next week we're going to start lowering them. Uh, and, again, here's the point. If they already need to be north of five, Jason, why don't they do this at the next meeting? It's simple. Yeah, why not? Why not the next meeting, right? You know, they, they could have raised it 75 basis points, raise it a full point, get there. Yeah, just get there, right, Joe? <laughs> they they seem to be dragging it out, right, Joe? There's 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 this apprehension or this, you know, just like uh, it seems like the whole process of, of uh, the inflation, uh, it's always uh, like slowly dragging it out and making it much more severe. Because remember, you know, it was transitory. Well, first of all, it's not happening. Then it was transitory. And then yeah, it'll be short lived. You know, and then well, the rate hikes will only last a certain amount of time. It's, it's it's uh, there's one of two things. They're planning something very specific, which is what I'm. That's the camp I'm in, or they don't exactly know what to do. It's it's one or the other. Yeah, I think it's a well. I don't think they know what to do because there's no easy answer. It got entrenched, and I don't know if they were counting on that or not. I know that. Listen, there's no doubt the Fed really wanted to see int uh, inflation get to about four percent. They did. The problem was it got a lot higher than that. Uh, and maybe maybe they thought that they could cool it down faster than they could, but they've got a plan, there's no doubt. But there were some interesting things that he said in this interview. This is new. I don't think that the feedback from the strength of the labor market is nearly as strong as many people portray it. So obviously, the Fed, Jason, they have 
all kinds of data about the labor markets. And we keep talking about, hey, the labor market, you know, they're still hanging in there. Now Bullard's saying, hey, listen, that link isn't nearly as strong as people think. It's, it's what I said earlier, Joe. I, I think the the labor numbers were rigged to make it always look better than it was. Now they're having to live with those numbers when they need to show something more honest. They can't, they can't get what they want. So I think I think they're right. It's much more severe than it's showing in the numbers, and uh, it's 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 kind of costing them some grief in the new types of manipulations that they're running into. So I, you know, it's interesting how you said they were aiming for four percent, Joe. And I said earlier in the show. Uh, when you want to create the uh, inflation, sometimes you shoot too small and sometimes you shoot too high. And it's, it, it never goes exactly the way you plan because you don't know exactly how the economy is going to take the injection of money. So in 2008, when that crash happened and we had uh, quantitative easing, $29 trillion right off for the, the bailouts plus whatever else they, they may have given out. And they, they couldn't get the inflation going, Joe. So you got, you got to think after the, uh, the coronavirus crash – and, and uh, they, they were shooting for that inflation. They knew that $29 trillion didn't do it last time, so they printed 40% of all the money that's in circulation for the United States all in, in a couple of months' span to make sure they get the inflation, Joe. So, they, so this, this was a purposeful act. It's a yeah, little this, higher. That was... but you can't get the 4%, Joe. That's your thing. You, you can target all you want. It's like throwing a dart. You want to hit a bullseye, but it's going to go high or low. I think they wanted it to go high this time. Yeah, they, they hit the bazooka for sure. Patriot Radio News Hour, BUCU Saints, two thousand ninety-five dollars at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Jason and I are coming right back. Final segment. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Final segment here uh, with Jason and I, and then we're going to switch over to the half empty cup. Uh, you can always join that show by streaming us at thirteen sixty khnc dot com. For those of you. Uh, not in the northern Colorado area. You can always listen uh, to those two hours that way as well. Uh, but Jason, more back to Bullard here because he, he's starting to give us some clues. Talking about the labor market, saying, hey, it's really not as strong as people think. And I think Jason and I, we, 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 we've done a good job of telling you uh, the amount of people working multiple jobs is on an all-time record high, right? So so a lot of it could be exactly as Bullard said, which is, hey, yeah, people are working, but, uh, you know, they may lose a shift at this job or a shift at that job, right? It, it, it doesn't necessarily have to mean you're fired for people to be put in financial hardship because all of a sudden they've lost 16 hours of week uh, between the two jobs, and, and Jason, and a lot of times with this high inflation, that's enough. But then he went on to say that he doesn't want a replay of the 70s where he said it took 15 years to get inflation under control, kind of making the case that, hey, rates are going to be a lot higher than you think. Yeah, that, I think that's for sure, Joe. And, and the 15 years, I don't know if we'll have 15 years of high inflation, but I, I don't see how this ends in months. Hey, uh, oh, next year, it'll it'll all be fine next year. I, I don't see that, Joe, I, uh, until the the new Bretton Woods is set up and put into place with digital currency. We'll have high inflation through that and probably a little bit after that. They have to have a problem to fix with the new system, right, Joe? Yeah, there's going to be a pro- – I wonder what that's going to be. The problem with the new system is – that that that's going to be you know some some form of of bail in. Uh, they're going to use the digital money as a as a way of rewarding certain groups. Picking you know how government does right. They're, they they always have to pick the winners and the losers, Jason. They have to pick the winners and the losers. That's right. It's uh, it's always good to be a part of the big club when these things happen because you're well protected. So you got to be your own. You got to make your own club, right, Joe? That's it, and, and that's when you put your gold and silver away, and we got a great special here on Saints. We don't run Saints that often. Uh, I don't know. You know, people think they're the prettier coin, and I guess, right, if you put a gun to my head, I guess it is, you know, Lady Liberty is just the side profile of her face. Uh, the St. Gaudens has got the full-bodied Lady, Lady Liberty. So uh, I guess Teddy Roosevelt was right. It's a it's a better 
nicer design, uh, a little more flashy, if you will. You know, the, if you, the side profile of Lady Liberty, you know, maybe that's that, that's that classic look. Uh, they, they kind of souped it up there with the Saints. Uh, and these, again, these are choice, CU, choice uncirculated, or BU, brilliant uncirculated. Uh, Jason, these are the highest quality you can get for an ungraded coin. That's correct. That's correct. And like I said, these are. It's always nice to get something a little flashier, a little nicer. Uh, if you're if you're somebody that collects coins at all, then these are the ones you want to buy uh, when when these pop up. But uh, if you're just in the market just to buy gold, plain and simple, well, I mean, you might as well get the nicer one for the same price as as the lower grade ones. And so this is. It's a bonus, Joe. It's a huge bonus.